Hi, in this video with animation, I'll take you through a solved problem, a numerical, which covers a bit of work and energy calculation as well as friction and application of Newton's second law as applied to a block sliding on an inclined plane. So you have the details on the screen. The questions 1 and 2 pertain to a no friction situation between the block and the plane. The questions 3 and 4 introduce friction between the block and the plane. The first thing is to picturize the problem. The block is allowed to slide downwards freely from the top to the bottom. There is no friction here, so it's only gravity which moves the block. So if you look at the animation, the yellow arrow which is propelling the block downwards is due to gravity. With that, we draw a 2D sketch of the whole thing. Uh, we have a triangle in front of us. We have the height at the top marked as H, which is 5 meters. And we have the block with its uh, weight mg acting downwards. And the blue arrow shows the motion of the block downwards along the plane till the bottom of the plane is reached. So here the potential energy is converted into kinetic energy. There is no loss due to friction. There is no friction anyway. So mgh is equal to half mv squared. And therefore, v squared equal to 2gh. V becomes root 2gh. And plug in the numbers. And then we get V is equal to 9.899 meters per second. So in this case, we don't have to uh, apply any other equation. It's purely a case of conservation of energy. To find the acceleration, we apply Newton's second law. So F is equal to ma. At the same time, the net force downwards was mg sine 30. Therefore, ma is equal to mg sine 30. m and m will cancel and a will become equal to g sine 30. So sine 30 is half, therefore that becomes 9.8 into half, which is 4.9 meters per second square. This gives us more confidence to move to the next step. Now we introduce friction. So you can see the block sliding downwards in the same way, but there are some red arrows at the back, which are the forces of friction opposing the motion of the block downwards. The other things remain the same. So we draw a 2D sketch. We plug in the normal reaction, uh, N, which is mg cos theta. The normal reaction is perpendicular to the plane. You can see the friction has been introduced as a purple arrow, mu k into N, where mu k is a kinetic coefficient of friction into the normal reaction. And then, um, now the gravity has to overcome the opposition uh, offered by the frictional forces. With that, we equate all the forces acting in the same direction downwards along the plane. So we call that as net force or F net. That will be the downward force, mg sine 30, minus the upward force, mu k into n, because mg sine 30 and mu k into n are along the same direction, so we can do the arithmetic uh, addition of both. Now, again we apply Newton's second law, so F net is equal to m into a, and therefore m a becomes equal to the mg sine 30 minus mu k into mg cos 30. We take mg out, and in the brackets you get sine 30 minus mu k cos 30. That enables us to cancel out m on both sides of the equation, and we get the equation for acceleration. You plug in the values, and you get is 3.2 meters per second square. Note that it's much less than the previous case of 4.9 meters per second square. Now we can calculate the work done. The work done by gravity in case of friction, and we have to be careful here whether we're talking of with friction or without friction, uh, that's uh, force into distance traveled in the direction of the application of the force. So F net itself, by the way, is m into a. So that's 10 kg into acceleration was 3.2 in the case of friction, so that becomes 32 newton. The distance traveled by the block is nothing but the hypotenuse. So you do h by d is tan 30, therefore d becomes 8.67 meters. So f into d becomes 277.44 joules. So I hope uh, this problem was uh, easy to follow and that was interesting for you. Thanks and uh, have a great day.